to this powerful, to this powerful, powerful series as we continue with um, Dr. Bolo with the theme intense prayer or emergency prayer. Before I introduce him quickly yesterday as I was reflecting on the message, what struck me was the fact that when we're going through storms, Christ may not come at the first watch, he may not come at the second watch, he may not come at the third watch, but indeed he is coming right on time. This morning, I'd like to introduce again our speaker, um, Dr. Pastor Bolo. And I mentioned that he has a bio that is a mile long and each day I would just pick a snippet. I'm out of time today. So let me just tell you this, that he is married to Griselda Bolo, who was born in Nigeria. They met at Andrews University and they have three wonderful children, Molnale, Tapaya, James Jr. And so I just want to hand over to you, Pastor, this is your time. Thank you so much for being with us and may we all be blessed. Pastor, over to you. Thank you very much. I hope you all can see me clearly today. Thank you very much. Um, we want to bless God, bless the name of God. We want to thank God from wherever you are watching from or listening from. We want to say you're welcome this morning to our, our virtual prayer service. If you have your Bible, stand with me into the book of the book of Mark. Mark chapter four is where we're going to spend time today. And we're still focusing on intense prayer or emergency prayer. Um, um, there, are, there are prayers we pray that has to be intense or emergency situation. All prayers cannot be the same. And that's what we are trying to discuss. But in other ways, we are saying that God will hear and he will answer our prayer when we speak to him. Um, um, Mark chapter four, the Bible says this. The Bible says in verse, in verse 35, the Bible says, and the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over the other side. And when they had, verse 36, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose, verse 37, a great storm of wind and the wave beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Verse 39, and he arose and rebuked, and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm, and he arose and said, and he said unto them, Why are ye fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Verse 4 and verse 41. And they fear exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obeyed him? emergency prayer. Pray with me. Father, speak to us for we're listening. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Is it possible to walk with Jesus and yet don't know him? Is it possible to grow up in the church and yet don't believe the God of the church? Is it possible to come to church on Sabbath or whatever day you worship? Is it possible to go to worship and yet don't believe the God that you are serving? Don't really trust him that much. Yes, you hear other people praising, you hear other people singing, you hear other people clapping, yeah. Other people doing some worship things, but but is it possible that some of us spend time in church or or in the presence of people that worship and yet don't really know who Christ is? Is it possible? Mm. Is it possible that we might even follow Him along the way, but really don't believe Him? Is it possible? Jesus have been teaching. 
And yesterday we talked about a storm. And I just want to continue about another storm because I believe emergency prayers come to fluation in storms. Today, Jesus has been preaching in, he's been giving parables, he's been talking, he's been doing things, and the Bible says something amazing. And what the Bible says that I want us to remember is this. The Bible says that he spoke parables, and, and the last parable before the storm had to do with the parable of a grain of mustard seed. And Jesus told the disciples, uh, uh, if you plant a mustard seed, a little seed, the smallest seed, and by the time it dies and grows, it becomes a, a big tree that, that, that spread its branches and, 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 and the fowls of the air uh, live in it and, 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 and other animals take shade on it. What Jesus was trying to share with them is that our faith must grow. Are you listening to the preacher? You can be in church all these years and your faith is still at the same level. Jesus saying that faith must grow. That's what Jesus saying here. But right away, the Bible says he had been teaching the whole day. He is not tired. And, 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 and he tells the disciples, let us go over to the other side. Amen. And the Bible said they took him into the ship. He was very tired. They took him in the ship. And when they took him, the Bible says that while they were all sitting on deck, Jesus went to the lower part of the ship and he fell asleep. You know, I do lots of evangelistic meetings around the world before COVID and, 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 and there were some times and I'm doing church growth and all of this and and, 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 and there was this day I came home one night and one day I was so tired and I wanted to help my wife in the house to do some laundry and, and I had to go down the basement of the house to, to put the clothes in the machine. And, and as I was going down the basement, the last staircase, the last stairway before I got down to the main floor, I skipped it and I fell on the floor. And, 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 and my wife was upstairs, everybody upstairs did not know, and, and, but when I fell, I was so tired, I fell. But the amazing thing is that I fell asleep. I did not wake up till 30 minutes later. My wife had to call me. 30 minutes later, she came down and said, babe, are you okay? And I was sleeping. I was so tired. You know, sometimes we are so busy, we are so tired. And as a man, now I, I want us to understand this because someone's gonna say, are you saying that Jesus a God sleeps. Jesus was man and he was God. As a man, he got tired. As a man, he did not have place to rest his head. As a man, he was weary. As a man, he was broke. Jesus, as a man, and so as a man, he fell asleep in the boat and resting. The Bible says in the in, that the hinder part of the ship down and he's resting on the pillow. And this is what happens. Whenever we fall asleep, even in our Christian journey, whenever we yes. fall asleep, even in our Christian walk, what happens is that the devil take an opportunity to come and get rid of us. Mm. Whenever you fall asleep in your Christian journey, the devil finds a loophole to come to you or come in our homes, in our lives, to cause havoc. Yes, sir. And the devil said, oh, well, well, if you're sleeping, now is the best time to kill him. Because you see, the devil understood that if he killed Jesus by drowning, he would not have been qualified to redeem humanity. Mm. Because the Bible had made it clear that he must stretch on the cross. The Bible had made it clear that he had to be the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. The Bible had made it clear that without the shedding of blood, sin could not be remitted. Sin cannot be forgiven. The devil said, ha, if he's falling asleep, now is the best time to get rid of him. Are you there with the preacher? 
Amen. Amen. And so the Bible says in Mark chapter 4, the Bible says, as they are in the boat, the, the wind begin to blow. And the amazing thing, there are other little ships. The Bible mentions that. In other words, we are not alone in our crisis. Yes. If you're sitting with your family, you can turn to someone in your uh, immediate in your family group and tell them we are not alone. Don't ever think I am the only one left. Don't ever think I'm the only one going through it. There are others that are going through worse than you're going through. You are not alone. Mm -hmm. We are not alone. Lord have mercy. And the Bible says there were other little ships that were going through the crisis. The wind began to beat and then the wind began to grow and build force velocity. The wind began to pick up and the storm began to rage. The Bible says, that, I love this, the Bible says the lightning began to flash and the thunder began to roll and the disciples being skilled fishermen say we got this under control. Last night, I pointed something out, if you remember. I said to you, as soon as Peter recognized they were sinking, he was sinking, he cried up for help immediately. Yep. But in Mark chapter 4, they're not calling Jesus for help. Instead, they're trying to solve the problem. They're trying to dip. The Bible says that the ship was being filled with water, so they're trying to use all of their fishermen's skills. But the only thing is, the more water they took up, the more water got into the boat. Sometimes when you're in crisis, the harder you try, it seems that there is no help now. The sometimes when you're in crisis, the more tears are falls. It seems that God is not a very present help in times of trouble. Sometimes when we're in a storm, it seems that there is no one that cares or is listening to, 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 to your cry. Are you there with a the preacher? Amen. Amen. And while they were trying, doing everything else, my favorite writer said in, in her book, she said that the lightning flashed and, and somewhere as the lightning flashed, they saw someone sleeping in the hidden part. How can Jesus sleep or miss a storm? Hey. He's slipping in the hinder part, and as the storm raged, she said the lightning flash. As the lightning flash, they saw him. Amidst their confusion, amidst their fear, amidst everything else, they turned to him and said, someone shouted, Master. Yes, sir, Master. Don't you care that we'll perish? And I love the song that says, Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. The sky is filled with darkness. Seem like no help is nigh. Care is that not that we perish. How can thou allow us sleep? But you see, that was the wrong question. Friends of mine, this morning, I want us to understand Jesus cares. There is no tear that falls on God's, God's earth that Jesus does not see. There is no sorrow that Jesus does not bear. There is no pain that Jesus does not experience. Are you there with the preacher this morning? Amen, amen. And amidst their cry, they sent out an SOS to Jesus. Master, don't you care we perish? You see, prayer, I told you intense prayer is not fancy prayer. I told you intense prayer is not eloquent prayer. I told you intense prayer is a prayer that comes from the heart. And, and they sent an intense prayer or an emergency prayer to Jesus. Don't you care we perish? Sometimes prayer can come in the form of a question. 
Don't you care that we are drowning? Don't you care that my son is off on drugs? Don't you care that I'm losing my job? Don't you care that COVID has taken my only child? Don't you care? This morning, I want to share with you that God cares. There is nothing we're going through that he is not mindful of God cares. And the Bible says when Jesus woke up, he did not question them. He woke up and stood up to the, to the way. You see, as a man, he fell asleep. But when he woke up, he woke up as God. I wish we were listening to the preacher. Oh, yes. He woke up as God. He looked at the wave and the heap. And, 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 and the Greek word is as he power, he said to the, to, the, to, to the storm, hush, it's actually not peace. You can be in the midst of a storm and you say peace. <laughs> he said to the wind, see power, and, and, and then he said hush, and apparently the wind was still trying to misbehave. Then the next word he used is the Greek word filmo. That word means quiet. Sometimes you got to speak resistant to your problem. You got to tell the devil and get thee behind me. Sometimes you got to look your problem in the face and say no weapon form or fashion against me or my family will prosper. Sometimes you got to look at your crisis and say my God is still the promise keeper. Sometimes you got to look and say my God is still the miracle working God. Sometimes you got to look the problem in the face and say to it, hush. Jesus said to the storm, hush. And then he said to it, fumo. The word fumo here means be quiet. He muscled the storm. He hushed the storm. And the Bible says immediately, think about it, 100 feet wave. Wind blowing everywhere. You see, as a man, he fell asleep. As a man, he did not have a place to rest his head. But as God, he has a mansion, he has a kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. As a man, when he came on this earth, he had 12 Cyrus disciples following him. But as God, seraphim and cherubim bowed down before him and called him Lord God Almighty. As a man, he walked on dusty streets of Palestine. But as God, Cherubims and seraphim and chariots escorts him. Are you there with me? As a man, he was broke, but as God, he owned the first ATM ever to, to come to planet Earth in the form of a fish in the lake. Are you there with me? Amen. He said, Hush, be still. The Bible says something amazing. The Bible says, <laughs> I love this. The Bible says, when he was done, then he addressed the disciples. Yeah. He did not address them in the midst of their crisis. He allowed them to be calm. Sometimes the best time to speak to the kid or to speak to that situation. It's not in the midst of the crisis. Sometimes you gotta get the situation to come and put sense in the person and put sense in the situation. He waited for everything else to be done. Then the Bible says, and he said unto them, why are you fearful? That word here said, they were terrified. Why are you fearful? How is it that you have no faith? This morning, I want to ask you the same question. Why is it that your problem seems to be bigger than you? Because whenever we make our problem bigger than us, we are saying that our God is a little God. Lord have mercy. Why are you fearful? The same God yesterday, 
The same God that made a way when there was no way. The same God, to, it's the same God to the Jesus asking them, why are you fearful? In other words, Jesus was saying to them, don't you know that even you could have told the storm to be still and it would have listened to your voice. <laughs> the Bible says that whatsoever we burn on earth is yep. burned in heaven. Are you listening to the preacher? If you hear me, Amen. wherever you are, give the Lord a hand of praise. Whatsoever you command on earth is commanded in heaven. You know, some days when I'm on my way to get some work done and there is a storm brewing around. A few years ago, I was about to start a 10 evangelistic meeting and the weather report, everyone came and said, Pastor, there is a storm. There is no way you can build this tent. Uh, the storm is brewing. Everything else is going to rain for the entire day. I said to them, you don't understand. The tent will be pitched before the storm hit. You don't understand. They said, Pastor, what are you talking about? I said, I had a word with the God that controls the element. Are you there with me? You see, when you have faith in God, you can tell the rain to stop and God can hold the cloud back. When you have faith, you can speak to your situation. You can walk in the hospital room and command and the person that the doctor has given hope all oh, can get up from their bed. When you have faith, you can tell the mountain, be that removed. And it will be. Jesus saying, why are you not exercising that faith? My time is up now. Why are you not exercising that faith? This morning as I close, I want to say to you, there is no problem that is bigger than you and your God. When Jesus was leaving earth, he said, greater work than these shall you do because I go to the Father. The problem is we're not even using what we have to our disposal. Don't you know that no weapon form against you can prosper uh, because yeah. Jesus said that. Yeah. Don't you understand that he wants to make you the head and not the tail? Don't we know that he has said it this way, that we control everything on planet Earth because God made it that way. That's the question Jesus was asking them. Why are you fearful? And then they ask this question among themselves. The Bible says, and I'm going to tell you why they were fearful before I close now. Give me one minute. The Bible says, the reason they were fearful is because they did not know who Jesus was. Oh. Have mercy, somebody. Do you really know who Jesus is? Do you understand that Jehovah is his name? That he's a mighty hey. warrior and he's great in battle. Do you Amen. understand that he is the fourth man in life, fire and furnace? Do you really know him? Do you understand that he's the one that show up in the lion's den and shut the lion's mouth? Do you really understand that? Do you know that he's the God that is going when he's coming? Do you understand that? Hallelujah. Do you really know who Jesus is? You see, that's the problem. They did not know who Jesus was. If we know who Jesus is, we can say the pastor, he is the moon mover. We can say that the hey. Napoleon, there is no one bigger than this God. We can say that the three Hebrew boys, King, we will fear no nothing you say. Our God is able. And even if That's he does true. not show up, we will not bow down because we trust this God. <laughs> Do we know who he is? Bow your heads with me. Father. Amen. 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 Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak to us. Yes. May we tap into the power that you've given us. The devil thought he could have killed you by drowning. And when you woke up, you wrapped the lightning around your face. The Bible says you muscled the wave. Amen. And said, quiet. 
be still. Yeah. Fear be still. The Bible says, and the wind cease. And the amazing thing is that those that are around are benefited from the miracle. And today, God, you're telling me, tell my children, I want to bless them so that others can see and glorify the God in heaven. So, Lord, I pray that they will understand their storm when it came to make them strong. That trouble don't last always. That whipping is just for a moment. Yes, Lord. The joy comes in the morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' Thank you. name. Amen.